A new study shows Paxlovid causing resistant COVID strains, and sadly, the mainstream media is not reporting on it. And I'll just say, that's a huge reason I don't consume any Fox or CNN content. I just feel it's a waste of my time and full of platitudes and meaningless banter. But that's just me, and that doesn't mean I'm right. Anyways, if you're just looking for a quick summary of this video, here it is. A new study on Paxlovid, the COVID pill, explained that when scientists inserted an important part of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, a protease, that allows the virus to replicate and infect human cells in SARS-CoV-2 into a VSV virus and then expose that edited virus to the main component of Paxlovid, mutations occurred that made the drug useless. That could explain the rebound infections many people are experiencing after taking the drug Paxlovid. Anyways, that's the summary, but you really need to stay tuned because the details matter. But before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description below if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. And also, I have YouTube memberships now that give you access to more content, so just click the join button above. Anyways, let's get into this. So I'm going to pull up my new Substack post on this Paxlovid study. So hold on one second. Okay, I'm going to highlight this paragraph right here. Now, this was a study done in a lab on a VSV virus, not on people. Okay, and basically what was done was scientists took a part of the SARS-CoV-2 virus called 3CL-PRO or 3-chymotrypsin-like cysteine protease and inserted that into a VSV virus. In other words, scientists took a part of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and put it into another virus called the VSV virus. So in order for you to understand the importance of what I just said, I need to explain exactly what 3CL-PRO does. So one second, I'm going to pull up another image. Okay, so as you can see here, here, 3CL Pro, also known as M Pro, are like scissors, as you can see right here in this image. 3CL Pro or M Pro is needed to break down viral polypeptides or proteins, so those broken down proteins can function and give marching orders to our cells to build more SARS-CoV-2 virus. After all, a virus needs to replicate itself in order to survive. So as you can see, the purple SARS-CoV-2 virus enters the human cell right here, then once inside, releases its RNA contents. Now, if you look here, that multicolored line is a SARS-CoV-2 polyprotein, but that has to be broken down by the scissors right here, which again is 3CL Pro, in other words, M Pro, into smaller proteins or else the virus can't continue replicating or spreading throughout the body. And this is exactly where Paxlovid comes in, right? Paxlovid stops this process from happening. Specifically, it stops these scissors right here from breaking down those viral polyproteins right there or instructions from the virus that program your cells to replicate it and then your body is able to clear the rest of the virus faster than the virus is able to replicate inside of you. You get me? So let me open my Substack post again. Hold on one second. Now let me scroll down right here. And now I'm going to explain the study a little more in detail. So that special VSV virus with a special SARS-CoV-2 part added to it by scientists called 3CL Pro or M Pro, that virus was then introduced to other cells called BHK21 cells. Basically, that SARS-CoV-2 like virus, when exposed to those BHK21 cells, would end enter, infect, and then replicate inside, then spit out the new virus or viral progeny. But that's not all. The main ingredient of Paxlovid, called Nermatrelivir, was added to the mix in order to see if it could create resistant mutants. Now, let me draw your attention back to this picture. Hold on. So if you look at both image G and H, image G, otherwise known as mutant G138SF305L, was resistant to Paxlovid's main drug, a protease inhibitor. If you look on the right, if the drug was effective, that line would have decreased substantially from left to right, but it didn't. The line stayed straight, meaning after the drug was exposed to the mutated viruses, the viral titers did not decrease. 
Um, same thing with the other mutant to the far right here. This is another mutant brought on by overexposure to Nermatrelver, Paxlovid's main protease inhibitor. Finally, I'm going to explain what I feel to be the most harrowing part of all this. <laughs> I'm going to highlight this right here and read it verbatim. Quote, a search of NCBI and GI said databases revealed mutations predicted by the authors were already existing SARS-CoV-2 depositions, which raised concerns about future Paxlovid resistance and formation of new resistance strains from taking the drug. In other words, these mutations already exist and Paxlovid could make viral resistance worse worldwide. So what does all this mean? Well, there's a lot of problems here. Paxlovid is prone to cause mutations. We've known this from historical data. So taking a drug that could potentially hasten new viral mutations may yield something less severe or more severe. Who knows? This should never have been one of the main treatments for COVID in my opinion. People may disagree with that. And also Paxlovid has many other interactions with different drugs, specifically statins or cholesterol lowering medications. It's not safe to take them at the same time. And nearly 50% of people over the age of 75, which is the demographic of people who would mostly consume Paxlovid, are on those cholesterol lowering medications. Anyone want to tell me how any of this makes any sense? Well, what makes sense is that yet again, the FDA and CDC failed everyone. Finally, Paxlovid can damage the kidneys and can indirectly alter liver function. All that said, I am not a fan of Paxlovid. And so this is basically where the video ends. Anyways, those are the facts, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.